Hey everybody, welcome to day zero of our next daily creative challenge. It's super cool to see all of you here. I'm just gonna take a peek at the chat and see who's in here. How many spins will she do? Austin, that's the sad thing about this time in this world is I don't have a spinny chair right now. I have my dining room table chair. <laughs> How you all doing? Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I saw David was in the chat, super cool. Lindsay, Steve, all the way from New Zealand. Good to see you, Ralph. Paco, hi. Susan, you like the hair? You like my quarantine cut? Thank you, thank you. So if you are new to the daily creative challenges, you are in the right place because this is the day that we take to kind of explain what's gonna be going on for the next two weeks, what we're gonna be learning, and how you can participate. So if you are totally new, please in the chat, let me know. Give me a, a newbie in the chat and I will say hello to you. Great hair change, thanks Steve. Thanks very much, it was very easy. Did it in my bathroom. <laughs> Terry, hello from Florida. Tanya, sorry I'm late. No worries, Tanya, you're right in time actually. So uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do if you want to take part in these daily creative challenges is check out the landing page. So if you go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, that is where you can learn all about the adventure that we're gonna be going on. So like it says here, build your Photoshop skills in nine challenges. And this challenge is going to be going from today until next Friday. So every day, every work day, in between now and then, we're going to be doing one of these challenges every morning. We're going to be hanging out in Discord, giving feedback. It's going to be a good time. So if you want to join us on Discord, you can go to bit.ly slash PS Discord. And that is our community. So let me show you that super quickly, actually. I'll get it launched up, actually. I might have to load super quick. So maybe we can pop back to just the me screen. Perfect. Thank you very much. And there we go. So if you want to join us on Discord, this is what it's all about. You can post every day's challenge in this feedback area. And as you can see here, Sam is giving some mega feedback right now. So we've got Arav posting his challenge, Melis posting theirs, the Manhattan, Super cool, Renetta, the potion. So yeah, you can get good feedback, get critiques, and give other people feedback as well. And like I said, every day we're gonna be having these daily live shows. So at 9 a.m. Pacific time, right now, for the next 20, 25 minutes, we're gonna be going over each day's challenge. And when I say challenge, I mean we're gonna be asking you to learn about blend modes in Photoshop, uh, learn about cropping and straightening and all those kinds of things. Maybe we'll even jump into Photoshop on the iPad but you can find those challenges every day here. So if you come to this landing page, every day one of these will be unlocked. And then you can also find the challenges on Discord. If you go to creative challenge at the top, Sam, thank you Sam, will be posting the challenge. So we'll have a little bit of info there. Okay, cool. So, Kara, hi, how was your stream this morning? Super cool to see you. Happy birthday, by the way. Everyone give Kara a happy birthday shout out. Diana says it's evening here, wine in hand. That's amazing, Diana. I'm still working on my first cup of coffee. <laughs> yes, Sam is a super talented painter. I agree. Alrighty. So during these welcome streams, we like to show you how to make a project on Behance, since that is the way that we are going to be sharing our work. Let me show you an example. If I go to my profile, you can see the last, I don't know, 10 or so of my projects are all daily creative challenge projects. And if you don't know what Behance is, that's where we're chatting right now. It's an awesome uh, social community where you can host your creative portfolio as well and get hired, find people to hire. It's very cool. I always tell this anecdote, but I found my Adobe internship on Behance, so it works. Yes, happy birthday to Kara, super cool. Kirsty says it's afternoon over here in the UK. Happy afternoon, Kirsty. So this is what we're going to end up with at the end of the challenge. A nice project with nine different assets in it. You can lay it out maybe a little bit more nicely than, than I did. I kind of just plot my images in here. I haven't had time to go back in and design my whole project, but that's another layer on the cake. Cool. So let me show you how to make a Behance project by first showing you how to use a little bit of Photoshop so we can get a cover image for our Behance projects. Now, if you don't have Photoshop and you're wondering how to get it, one surefire way to get it is to download it from your Creative Cloud desktop app. 
So if you have Creative Cloud, it will come with this desktop app, which is basically your, your hub for all of your apps. So as you can see here, when I open it, I've got the all apps plan, so I can see all of the apps that I have installed. Here's a little peek behind the curtain. Look at all my apps. I didn't even know I had Bridge installed. That's great. And then down here, there are the other available apps as well. You can check out the rest of the app over here in the left tab by checking out um, categories. So if I'm interested in photography, what kind of apps would I want? If I'm interested in illustration, what kind of apps would I want? There's portfolio right there, which is super cool. Comes with your Creative Cloud subscription. It's an awesome little portfolio site. Mia says it's cold and cloudy here in Kalamazoo. Cold and cloudy in Kalamazoo. I feel that, Mia. I feel that. It's an unforgiving early morning here in New Zealand. Oof. Steve, what time is it? Buki Margoof. Oh my gosh. Hi, Becky. Finally able to catch your stream watching at 6 p.m. in Berlin. Well, you're in Berlin. Super cool. Thank you for tuning in. Currently showing people how to download Photoshop. So I will practice what I preach. Here is Photoshop, and I actually need to update it. I'm not going to do that right now because we need to use it. But if you haven't downloaded Photoshop yet, you will click download here and it will download for you. Super easy. So once it is downloaded, this is something that you might see. You can see all of your recent projects and over here in the left uh, tab, you can also click on learn to get some tutorials. If maybe this live stream uh, isn't enough of a tutorial for you, here's some more. This one's really cool because it will take you through the entire workspace of Photoshop within Photoshop. So you can open it. Actually, let me just show you. If I click it, it will open Photoshop and then have these little coaching cues for you uh, to learn. So if you read this, you can click next, learn more about it, etc., etc. So let's uh, jump out of that. And for this uh, specific cover image that we're going to make, I'm just going to show you how to make it from scratch. So if you have no starter files, no templates or anything, you're just going to go to file, new, Nick says, I'm enjoying this live stream while I <laughs> remove 30 years worth of unwanted fonts. Ugh, oh my gosh. Nick, where were you keeping all those fonts? That's amazing. So in this new document window, you have a lot of options to make your new document. So you can change the width and the height and the resolution, all those kinds of things over here in the right. But also at the top in this bar, you can choose different uh, templates. So say you know specifically you are working on a photo and it's going to be a portrait two by three you can click that and it will just open a new document for you you can also scroll on down here and download some free templates we like that word around here free but for now let's just do pixels and i'm just going to do 2000 by mm, let's do like 800. we want it to be wide and kind of short because this will be a banner at the top of our um, project all right, resolution 300, that's great. High res, and there we go. So if you do command minus to zoom out a little bit, you can see right here is my workspace, kind of hovering around it. And then over here on the right are all of my panels. This is completely customizable. So right now I'm actually a little overwhelmed by the amount of panels that I'm seeing. Let's go up here to this burger icon, as they say. Have you guys ever heard it called that? The, the three lines on top of each other? Burger. We're gonna close that tab group and I can even grab these, move them in, move them out. I can undock them if I want to and then pop them back in if I need to. Super easy. You will notice throughout this entire challenge that we're gonna be working a lot with the layers panel because that's where all of our art will live on different layers. Then we're also gonna be looking a lot at this properties panel. The properties panel changes depending on what tool you have selected. So if I come over here to my um, tools over here, perhaps, there we go. And I activate maybe the text. You'll notice that the character panel opens up within the properties panel. So it changes depending on what tool that you're using. All right, Chad says just stepping in here. How's everyone doing? Great, Chad, happy Monday. Yes, hamburger icon, you know. Guys, if you have any questions, feel free to ask Chad. He's kind of a wizard although he might just be popping in, popping out, as wizards do. All 
All right, so for our cover image, I'm just gonna add a simple colored background and then add some text on top that says the name of the project so that when people see the thumbnail, they can see what they're in for. Very good. One super easy way to add a colored background to a document is to grab the paint bucket tool. So if you do not see the paint bucket tool in your um, toolbar over here on the left, you can always long press and you'll see a couple more tools appear. Or you can just tap G and that is the hotkey for it. So there we go, we've got paint bucket. Let's choose maybe a darker blue by clicking on these color swatches. There we go. It's that easy. Kind of matches my, my flight suit. Actually, if Kara's still here, I was thinking of you because you were doing those flight icons during your live stream and I thought this looked like a NASA suit. So there you go. That's for you. James says hi from sunny or not South Shields UK. Awesome. Sig, hello. You posted nothing else. I've typed as shown up today. What's up with that? I don't know, Sig, but I'm glad to see you now. Oh yeah, so true, Steve. Newbies are welcome here, but advanced users are welcome as well because you can always learn something. One cool tip that I have for Photoshop, the interface, is that if the darkness is bothering your eyes, like it kind of is right now with this blue, it's kind of vibrating together, you can right click on your workspace and change the color. So I could go back to the classic light gray, you can even do a custom color, blue perhaps. Uh, but let's do the black. That works well for my eyes right now. And then we're just gonna jump over to the text tool. Can you guys guess what the hotkey for text is? It's T. Ashi says you should wear that color more often. I'm feeling it today, Ashi. Thank you. Uh, move to the other side of the screen so you can see my right side icons. Oh shoot, let me, sh let me just move my layers panel. You don't need to move me, it's all right, unless you want to. Wizard, do you wanna move me? Okay. We'll just move this over. Easy as that. Have you ever seen panels on the left and right? Photoshop. You amazing. All right, so we have our text tool selected. There's a bunch of other text tools that you can play with as well. But let me just click within my canvas. And for this project and for this entire challenge, the whole idea is playing at home. So we're all kind of confined to our homes right now if we're able to be. Uh, and it's a great time to play and learn and design new things. So this project is going to be called Play at Home. And when I type it, the color is the color of the background. So let's highlight all of that. Come over here to our characters panel. Maybe change it. There we go. Play, hitting uh, return to get a new line at home. All right, that's super small. I'm using the move tool to get that centered and you see those magenta guides pop up to help me center things, make sure they're right in the middle. Great, um, that's pretty small. So let's either increase the font size or just grab it and transform it. Eric says crazy easy, too easy even. <laughs> um, there's a cu couple different schools of thought when it comes to changing the size of a typeface or font. Uh, some people don't really care if you just transform it. But if you're kind of a design purist, you might want to come in here, make sure the text is selected and actually just change the font size. That way you can change the leading as well. I'm over here in my characters panel. You can increase the leading, which is the space between the lines. You can increase the font size, type size. This just gives you a little bit more ability to customize. And then you can also change the kerning as well, which is the actual space between the letters. So one thing I wanna do with this design is make sure this uh, at sign is a little bit bigger. Since the typeface for this is tall and skinny, I wanna make sure this at side sign doesn't feel too weird or out of place. It's very round compared to these rectangular letters. Ashi says sleep, what's that? It's very important, Ashi. I hope you get some. All right, let's just highlight this specific symbol and increase the type size. So it's gonna take up a little bit more space. We're also gonna increase the letting a little bit. And don't worry if I'm going a little bit fast right now, if you're a beginner, we will definitely be talking more about all of these options in the next two weeks. You're stuck with me for the next two weeks. 
<laughs> Stay and play. There you go, Alberto. I like that. Tanya says Fresco is my absolute favorite. Tanya, it's it's up there for me. I think I'll love Photoshop forever, but Fresco is built for people like me. You and me, Tanya, as illustrators. Alrighty. Just playing with the kerning here. Making sure it looks good. And then if you want to get real wild with it, we can make a new layer if we see fit. Whoops, not a new document, new layer, please. That was just a shift command N or shift control N if you're on a PC to make a new layer. And I could use my brush tool, guess the hotkey, it's B. I have some Kyle Webster brushes selected. I'm just going to paint over. You can't really see it too well because it's the same color, but then I'm going to change the blend mode. And like I said, we are going to be going over all of this kind of stuff over the next two weeks. Don't you worry about it. I'm just trying to inspire you right now to wet your head tight, to know what is possible. Maybe we'll put this play at home on top. Okay, cool. So now seems like a good time to get this exported so that we can get a Behance project going. Uh, Michael says, what are we learning this morning? Michael, we're learning about the daily creative challenge. So the, today is the kind of welcome day where I just explain what the challenge is going to be. But currently I'm showing you how to export our cover image for our project in uh, Behance. So to get an image out of Photoshop and onto something else, let's export it by going to File, Exports. And there's a lot of different export options. It depends how detailed you want to get with your export. If you need a specific resolution or a specific size or specific scales, um, these are all here for you. But right now, let's just do export as. It's kind of a nice medium. It gives us a lot of options, but it's not too overwhelming. So we get this export as window and we can choose our file formats. JPEG works really well for this. We might want to use a PNG if we have a transparent background, but we don't. We have a blue background, so JPEG works just fine. Here you can also do final changes to our image size. So we can just keep it at 2000. Height 800, scale perfect, perfect. And then export. So this is where we can choose where we want to put things. That is not the right one. April, there we go day zero let's do cover image one perfect make sure you remember where you save stuff just spit a little bit so you can remember where it is when you're uploading on behance jennifer says i can't get fresco with a new laptop and new artboard oh shoot well fresco is free there is some premium uh, options but you can download it and play around with it Alrighty, so we're back on Behance, and if you do not have an Adobe ID or a Behance account, feel free to make one. They're free. It's a great way to share your work, and let's go up here to this blue button that says create a project and get it going. Tunk says, I feel dizzy as I see that layer panel on the left. Honestly, me too, a little bit. I was just kind of willy-nilly throwing it, throwing it across there, and it stuck. Alrighty, so this is the project builder or editor in Behance. And we have a lot of different options for getting our media from other places into our project. So we can come over here to the left side in this add media area and upload our file. So let's click that. We can choose cover image. I also have this other cover image that I made um, yesterday. I might choose this one actually because it has the Photoshop daily creative challenge in there. Hmm. All right, let's choose that one. A little bit of pre-work. There we go. Anna says, hello everyone. Hello, Kathleen. Hi, Anna. Happy Monday. How y'all doing? Jose, if you have a question that we can't answer during chat, uh, you can always come over to Discord and ask that. We have ask a question channels in there. All right, so we have our project in here. Now we could add more projects or we could have more images. We could add more text. We could even make a photo grid, which is what we're going to be doing for our future images that we add but for now let's just move on to cover that's number two up here or we can just click continue and that will take us to number two so this is where we're going to edit our uh, cover image it'll automatically choose the top image in your project but if i had more than one image in here there will be a bunch of thumbnails down here i could even upload a custom one like if i wanted to actually use the one that we just made 
I could do that too. But since it's pretty big, it might take a moment to, to load. There we go. So let's check this out. Let's scale it up a little bit. And I kind of like it sitting over here on the left. Since it's not totally center aligned, it's more left aligned. Perfect. All right, so we have our image. Let's give our project a title. This is going to be called Play at Home Daily Creative Challenge April 2020. It's a pretty long title, but to keep my all of my challenges straight, I'm just going to name it that. Crop and continue. All right, this is a really important step for building your project. These are your settings. That's also going to kind of be your like hashtags and keywords and uh, other kinds of tags to help people find your work. So one thing that is required is creative fields to help people find if they're looking specifically for graphic design or photography, they can find your work easily. So this project and this whole challenge is definitely going to be a lot of graphic design. We're going to be doing some photography and let's see, maybe some branding, perhaps you can always come back in here and change things if your project changes. But for now that works tools used. We're definitely going to add Photoshop. That's another tag that will help people find your work. And then in discoverability, this is super important in your project tags. You're going to do PS daily challenge. That way people within this challenge specifically can just search that in the search bar and find your work. All right, let's save that. And whoops, see if we can check it out on our profiles. I oh, know it might be in my draft still. I didn't publish it officially. All of my past projects. There we go. Settings and publish. It's this green button down here at the bottom. There we go. Super easy. Oh, Julia's in chat. What's up, Julia? We're going to be checking out the schedule for today in just a moment, but for now there is my project. So it's pretty cool. We're going to be jumping back into this for um, future days when we're working on our challenges, but we're also going to be uploading onto Behance to get feedback. So I'll show you that tomorrow when we're actually uploading a, a live project. Okay, so the challenge, or not the challenge, the schedule for today, we already had Terry streaming Be Creative on mobile, so we were showing some Photoshop on the iPad. That was really awesome. Uh, up next, we have Voodoo Val. She's going to be doing some illustration in Photoshop. You should definitely stick around for that if you have any interest in digital painting. She is amazing. Uh, after that, we're going to be doing the day zero of the Daily Creative Challenge for Illustrator. So that is awesome. If you want to learn some Photoshop, come here, little Illustrator. Stick around for that. Uh, then Aaron Nace from, from Flurn is going to be streaming at noon Pacific time. So that is really awesome if you want to learn about compositing in Photoshop. After that, we're going to be starting a new XD daily creative challenge. So there's three daily creative challenges going on today. That is really cool. And then Paul, oh, this is awesome, at 2.30 is going to be streaming how to live stream. Which, who doesn't want to know that? You want to do what we do? Watch that stream. And then finishing out the day, we have even more streams. We have Ben Marriott, who is an amazing motion graphics designer, one of my favorites. He's going to be streaming, I believe, from Australia at 3.30 p.m., some After Effects goodness. So that is going to be awesome. Do we have a recording for this later? Yes, Farhan, you can watch it right after the stream if you want to. Uh, or you can come to the landing page, be.net slash uh, daily creative challenge slash Photoshop. I think that's what it is. Um, very cool. Yeah. Nice. You're excited about Ben? Me too. Is this an original character? Me? <laughs> Let us know. Uh, cool. So if you guys have any questions about the Daily Creative Challenge, please feel free to ask them in Discord. Remember that link is bit.ly slash PS Discord, capital P, capital S. I'll be hanging out there for the next two weeks. And then I will also be back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. right after Terry's stream. It's going to be awesome for day one of our challenge. So thank you so much for being here. Stick around for Val's stream right after me, and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody.